It's a former Bush 43 deputy chief of staff, best-selling author Carl Rove on all of this. Um, Carl, what do you make of whether, you know, gyrations in markets like this affect voters? I, I tend to think that uh, maybe to a degree in a presidential election, um, I'm not so sure in a midterm election up or down. What do you think? I think there is an effect, but I think it is more modest. I mean, first of all, half the people in America are not directly invested in the stock market, even through their 401ks. So for them, it's just background noise. And, but even if you're invested in the market, we tend to accept good news more than we accept bad news. And we tend to have a little bit longer horizon and look at a lot of different other things like, how do I feel about my job? How do I feel about my paycheck? Do I think sales are good at the company that I work or the business I own? So there are a lot of other things that I think uh, the ups and downs of the market are, are going to be matched against and overshadowed in some regard. You know, this gets a little afield from what we wanted to talk about here, but I, I did want to get back to this notion of the administration, uh, as it has every time we have a downdraft. A week or two ago, it was the Federal Reserve's fault, not its fault. Um, today, Larry Kudlow is saying it's concerned about the midterms. Um, never a problem with trade policies, which seem to be coming up more and more in these earnings reports, Caterpillar among them saying the higher cost of you know, uh, steel and aluminum and all of these precious commodities that are all of a sudden being taxed now at, at these higher levels um, is impacting the bottom line. And Will, um, 3M has said that, the automakers have said that, uh, some of the technology concerns have said that. So what do you make of that? It's not, it's not anything yeah, we're I, doing, it, it's this. I th look, I do think there's some very legitimate concerns about slowing growth in China and about trade wars and, and tariffs. I was yesterday at a meeting of Texas oil and gas operators, and several of them talked to me about the difficulties they're having in getting the kind of specialty steel they need for the infrastructure needed to produce and distribute and refine energy. And uh, some of the steel can't be made in America. Is it made in America? They have to get it from places like South Korea or, or uh, uh, South Africa. And it's difficult for them to do with these high tariffs. It's raising the cost of doing business, making some projects less attractive, lengthening the process, because even if, you, even if the steel can't be produced in America, it takes a long time to get an exemption. And they, and they have quotas so that they, you may have fulfilled this year's quota on that kind of steel, and you have to wait until January to begin the project. I mean, it's a, just a nightmare for them. So I think there's some of those kind of things that are impeding the American economy. But, but again, the, the idea that this is about the election, that these ups and downs are, are, are somehow attributable to specific things like the Federal Reserve raising interest rates or people's growing concerns about the Democrats taking control of the House, I think is a little overstated. All right. So now let's get a sense of the, the environment going in here. The consensus seems to be, I don't know how right it is, uh, that, that Republicans are going to lose the House. I'm not of that mindset, which should make people run the, the conventional way they think it will run. I think the Republicans hang on, but barely, but they hang on to the House and they actually pick up a couple of seats in the Senate. Um, that, would, that would go against what the markets are anticipating, to say nothing of the, the consensus uh, polling community. But what are your thoughts on where we stand now two weeks out? Well, I think you're right. There is, uh, there, there, the Republicans stand a chance of gaining seats in the Senate because of the map. Uh, since 1914, when we began electing senators by popular vote rather than state legislatures, there's never been a map as good as this one, as favorable to the party in control of the White House as this map. One out of every five times in a Senate mid, in a midterm election in the Senate, the, the party in power holds its own or gains seats. I think this is going to be one of those one out of five times, and the Republicans are likely to gain two seats, maybe three seats, could be four seats on a really good day. All right. I, I was noticing as well, maybe with some of the data you were sharing, that in a lot of these candidates in the House alone, um, the gap between the candidates, in, I think 32 or so races, Carl, were, were, were five points or fewer. Now, that could swing wildly. And I'm wondering, uh, in the 94 ex experience where Republicans just swamped the House, at 153, I think, seats, were they anticipated going into that weekend to do the weekend before that well? I know they were expected to do well, but not 53 seats well. I, I don't think so. And the same in 2010. However, we did have something in play in both of those elections that we're not going to have in this election. And that was, a, a, I used to teach political science, it's called surge and decline. The theory is that when a president comes into office, as Bill Clinton did in 92 and Barack Obama did in, in uh, 2008, there is a surge. They bring in a wave of, of, of new members in the House 
who are in vulnerable, who are in marginal seats. And then they decline in the next midterm. In fact, Obama, they gained a bunch of marginal seats in the 06 midterm, gained some more in 2008, and then they got washed out to see in the 2010 election. Same with, uh, same with uh, uh, Bill Clinton. He had a surge of, of Democrats elected in, vulnerable, in marginal seats in, in 1992 who got washed out in 1994. There was no surge in the Trump 2016 election. In fact, Republicans lose, I think it is, uh, maybe it's three seats or six seats in the House. I can't remember exactly. Hmm. But they actually lose seats, unlike the normal pattern of when a new president comes in, he has coattails and pulls people in with him. So there are no group of sort of marginal people who are there in a freshman term who are there only because the president was so popular in, the, in, the, in his uh, initial election that they can get swept out to sea.